Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from London, England. Didn't I tell you not to upload documents to VirusTotal that you don't mind essentially becoming public? Well, uh, Xavier took a look at VirusTotal and found a number of documents within VirusTotal's database that do contain credentials. Other of little interesting outcome here is also some of the credentials that he found are obviously from Turkey. And with that, your top 10 passwords are also somewhat different than what you see in other top 10 passwords lists. For example, you see things like Turkish soccer teams in the top 10 and other specific vocabulary. This is also something to keep in mind for pen testers that in particular, if you are testing a site that's not English, the standard password lists that are often published focus more on English speakers and may not work as well for these other non-English sites. And Finnish authorities are reporting about issues with GPS along the Finnish-Russian border. This has happened in the past uh, during Russian military exercises in the area, but apparently this time no respective notice was issued in order to alert aviation of these problems. Now, planes for the most part can fly just fine without GPS, but apparently there is a smaller airport in Savonlina in Finland, close to the Russian border, that had to stop service because for that airport, no alternative ways are possible for navigation. GPS issues, of course, can also affect IT, in particular, if you are relying for GPS for time synchronization. Typically, the differences uh, that are caused by this kind of jamming are not significant enough to really sort of cause any significant issues here. But if you're concerned about this, you may need to consider using an internal time standard. Now, given the sanctions against Russia, the Russian websites are having a hard time renewing some of the TLS certificates that they obtained from commercial certificate authorities because, well, they don't really have a good way to pay for these certificates. In response, Russia now proposed setting up its own certificate authority and already has a website set up and some websites have already started using that internal certificate authority. The problem with that, of course, is that this certificate authority is not trusted by commonly used web browsers. The only browser really that trusted so far is the Russian-based Yandex uh, web browser. And the Russian government just suggests that people should use this particular browser. No word whether or not they even attempt to be sort of accepted into the trusted certificate authority uh, realm. At this point, it's probably questionable or so if this will happen within the near future. But as a result, if you are visiting a Russian website and it presents you with an invalid certificate, well, uh, this may be the reason. It's, of course, also possible that affected websites are just switching to Let's Encrypt, which is free, so no payment required. And as far as I know, is still allowing Russian entities to obtain certificates. And then yes, Spectre is back. The CPU vulnerability has yet again been revived, this time in the form of a branch history injection vulnerability. And video of a proof of concept exploit has been posted that does show how the hash of the root password, essentially the respective line in Etsy shadow, can be accessed by an unprivileged user. Exploitation of the problem is significantly easier if unprivileged eBPF is enabled. And one of the steps that you can take to protect yourself, even if it's not a complete fix, is to disable unprivileged EPF. And a lot of uh, Linux distributions have already taken that step in the last few months, but something you may want to double check. 
And SonarCube released a blog post with details regarding vulnerabilities in several open source package managers like, for example, Composer, Bower, Yarn, Pip, and others. The vulnerabilities include, for example, code execution vulnerabilities or also untrusted path usage vulnerabilities. Patches have been made available, so double check and make sure that your tools are up to date. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.